In the last video, we made this 2D character controller that shoots in the direction it's pointing in. However, each bullet is instantiated each time we shoot, and then it's destroyed after 3 seconds or when it collides with something. In this case, it wouldn't be too harsh on performance since we're not shooting too often and we're not shooting too many objects. However, let's say you have a shotgun with a really high fire rate that shoots tons of bullets per second. Your performance is not going to be so great once you have a bunch of these objects being spawned and destroyed on every frame or second. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to use an object pool in Unity. But what is an object pool? Well, it's what it sounds like. It's a pool of objects. A pool meaning a list. So it's a list of objects and the pool basically keeps track of your objects. So once your game starts, you instantiate all of your objects at the beginning, you store them in this pool, and then when you need them, you just pick them out of the pool and use them and then put them back when you're done. For a more easier to understand metaphor, imagine you're just chilling at the pool, but you happen to be an object or something that you want to instantiate and you're there with a bunch of your buddies. But then someone calls you to come out of the pool and do something. In this case, it would be a script taking you out of the pool and then asking you to do something. Then when you're done doing that thing, you go back in the pool to enjoy the time with your buddies. Notice how you didn't need to instantiate another person or object when they needed someone to come out of the pool. There were already the objects in the pool and you were just calling them when you needed them. So that's the basic idea and I'm going to be showing you how to do that right now. So last time we made the 2D top-down character controller and I'm going to scroll down. If you haven't seen the video, I'm going to link it in the description below. And so we had this player shoot function and every time we shoot, we say instantiate a bullet, set it to active, and then start this coroutine, which basically limits the amount of time you can shoot every 0.5 seconds. And then here is a bullet controller and this bullet controller is attached to each bullet. Each bullet has a speed. So I forgot to do something in the last video. Right here we have a destroy bullet after time, which destroys the bullet after three seconds. And I never actually called that function. So I'm just gonna do a quick on enable. So whenever the script is enabled, then we're gonna start the coroutine destroy bullet after time. All right, so this is destroyed after three seconds and it moves forward on every frame. And it's also destroyed whenever we collide or enter with another object. So let's make a pooler script in order to not have to instantiate these bullets each time and save on some performance. So I'm gonna right click and create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna call it pooler. And so there's multiple ways how to do this. I'm going to just say one of the ways you can do it using game objects. You can also do it with generic objects that don't have a specific type and you can just pass in the type dynamically. But I'm just gonna be doing it for game object because it's the simplest way to understand it. So the first thing that we're gonna need for our variables of our class is our the actual game object that we're gonna be passing in. We wanna keep track of the game object. So we're gonna say serialize field, private game object, and let's just call it prefab. So let's pass in a prefab that has its own script attached. In this case, it's the bullet. And then we are going to instantiate a bunch of those at the beginning. The other thing we're gonna want is our pool size. So how many of these do we wanna fit in our pool or our list? So let's do private it pool size. Another parameter that we want to have is if we want it to be expandable or not. So if we've used all the objects in the pool, do we want to instantiate new ones or do we just want to leave it like that? In this case, let's just put private pool expandable. So let's say if you run out of objects in your pool and you'd still need more bullets, then you can instantiate new ones and make sure you don't run out. Lastly, we're gonna need two lists to keep track of our pool. The first list will be our free list. So in this list, there are gonna be the game objects that are ready to be used, that are ready to get out of the pool and be used by some script. And then in the other list called the used list, this is the pool where we'll keep track of all the objects that are currently out of the pool and that are doing something. And we use that to keep track of all of our objects to make sure we don't miss any of them. Let's do private list game object and let's call this free list and then private list game object used list. And the reason I'm making it a list and not an array, you can do an array if you want. The problem is if you want to make it expandable, then you're gonna have to make a new array each time if the capacity exceeds the old array. And with the list, it automatically expands to suit your needs. So I'm gonna delete these two functions for now. And then on awake, so this runs before start, 
we're gonna instantiate all the objects and we're also gonna initialize these lists. So let's say free list equals new list, game object, and same with that other one, I'm just gonna copy the line above and put use list. And then since we're gonna be putting in the pool size from our inspector, we can just do a for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than pool size plus plus i or i plus plus, I just always do plus plus i. Then let's instantiate this object. However, instead of doing it right here, I'm just gonna make a new function. So we can just use that each time we exceed our list and have to create a new object. We don't have to write that code again from scratch. We can just call the method or function directly. So let's say private void generate new object. So this is just gonna instantiate an object for us and add it to our list. All right, so let's instantiate our game object. So let's say game object g equals instantiate and let's pass in our prefab. And we don't need to pass in any other parameters because we'll be setting the position and rotation directly in the player controller script when we get the object from this pool. So to keep things organized, when it instantiates it, it places it in the hierarchy at the top level and it's gonna get messy really quick. So let's put it under this transform. So we can say g.transform.parent. So our parent will be this current transform. And we're gonna assign this script to another game object. And then we're just setting our parent as that game object to make sure that we're being neat. We don't wanna set it to the player controller game object because then the bullets will be moving along with the player rotation and that's just gonna mess everything up. Then we can say g.setActive to false. So automatically the game object is instantiated and it's gonna be viewed in the scene. So if you do set active false, then it won't be viewed in the scene. And then lastly, we can say free list dot add, and we can add in our game object. And in our awake function, we can just say generate new object. See how nice it is to make separate functions for stuff. So now if we ever need to call that, we don't need to write that code again. And so there's two main functions to our pool which is get object and return object. So when you get an object, we wanna get an object from the free list. So whatever's free and we're gonna return it. And when we call the return object, we're gonna pass in our used object and it's gonna add it back to our free list because it's done being used. So let's do public game object, get object. And we wanna do it public because we want other scripts to reference this function. And then we wanna make sure that there's actually game objects in our free list. So we can say if free list dot count equals zero and not expandable, then we can just return null because there's no free objects and we're not allowed to expand our list. Else if free list dot count equals zero and we are allowed to expand, then just generate a new object. And so now let's get a game object from our list. So game object G equals free list. And then we can just get the last game object in the list. And to simplify this a bit, we can say int total free equals free list dot count. So this just keeps a reference to our current count in our free list. And I'm just gonna replace those two variables. And then I'm gonna say, get the last variable from our array, minus one, since our array index starts at zero. Then we can say free list dot remove at, so we can specify the index that we want to remove at, which is total free minus one. Additionally, we want to add this to our used list. So use list dot add G. So now we have added it to our used list and that's it for the game object. The last thing we just wanna do is just return the actual object itself. Pretty simple, right? All right, and then the other function is to return an object. So this object will be returned whenever we're done using it. So we can say public void return object. And then here we can pass in the object we want to return. And so there's this really neat function called assert. So it's called debug.assert and you pass in a Boolean statement and if it's true, nothing will happen, but if it's false, it'll print out an error message to the Unity console. And it's really useful if 
you want to debug stuff and not have just a bunch of console.logs everywhere or debug.logs. So we can just make sure that our use list actually contains the object before continuing. So use list.contains object. All right, after that, we can set the object to false. So set active false. So this will re erase um, the mesh from the scene. It won't be rendered anymore. And then we can say use list dot remove. And then we can pass in the object and it will remove that object from our use list. And then we can add it to our free list. So free list dot add object. There's more complicated ways of doing an object pool, um, but this is the simplest way and pretty easy to manage. All right, so to actually use it, we can go into our TD player controller and we can make a variable to keep track of our object pool. So we can say serialize field private pooler bullet pool. And then we're gonna pass in this value through the inspector. And then down here, when we shoot, instead of instantiating a bullet, we can say game object G equals bullet pool dot get object. And it will get an object for us. And then we can say G dot transform dot position equals bullet direction dot position, which was what I was basically doing last time, except instead of now instantiating it, we're assigning the values directly. And that's great and all, but how do you actually return the object? Well, as you may remember in our pooler, when we generate a new object, we assign the parent of that game object to be the pooler. So in the game object itself, in this case, the bullet controller, we can get a reference to the pooler from our parent. So in our bullet controller, we can just say private pooler pool, and then on start, and the reason we want to do a start is because the pooler generates the objects on awake. And then in the start, we can just say pool equals transform dot parent dot get component. And then we can say pooler. Instead of saying destroy the game object, we can say pool dot return object. And we can return this game object. So the game object the script is attached to. And I'm just going to copy that and put that for the on trigger enter. All right, so I'm gonna attach the script to a game object. So in our hierarchy, we can right click create empty. And I'm just gonna call this pooler. I'm going to add in a pooler. I'm going to select our prefab, which is our bullet one. Our pool size, I'm gonna say 30, which is probably more than enough. And then I'm gonna say expandable equals to true. Then in our player, you can see now we have a bullet pool variable here and we can just pass in our pooler and it will attach the first pooler it finds. So now when we press play, so you see once we expand our pooler, now we have 30 clones of our bullet. So it instantiated the bullet 30 times. And now when I click, you see that it's going to select bullets from this list. And slowly after the three seconds, it's going to not delete them, but put them back in the list. So now we can just keep using this list instead of having to instantiate bullets forever and ever and save on some performance. And this is especially good if you have a lot of game objects and or are instantiating a lot of stuff procedurally. A lot of procedural generation games use object pools in order to save on performance. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna thank my Patreon supporters for all of their support. If you're interested, I have a link in the description to my Patreon. I offer the source code for these videos. I also offer about three days early release for my videos and an exclusive Discord chat. I'm also gonna put my Discord channel link in the description. So if you're interested or have any questions, you can join it and ask in the help channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.